Hello and welcome back to our unmodded playthrough of Bannerlord. Now, uh, I gotta tell you something. I have upgraded my game version to the beta version of the game. And, uh, well, they've, they've actually included some additional changes to the one-handed. And I believe two-handed as well, if you uh, actually wanted to use two-handed. Um, they've, they've changed the traits a little bit. So you can see here that um, they no longer have that, uh, well, they, they do still have the uh, hit points being increased by two and, and so on and so forth, but they have actually added a whole bunch of other additional bonuses for taking these things. So for example, as you can see right here, increases your party limit by 15, but also reduces garrison wages in the governed settlement by 5%. You also have reducing recruitment costs, increasing gar garrison limits, and so on. There are just so many different things that you can go for here, and it's actually very nice because you can see here, you gain plus five hit points. That's pretty terrible, in my opinion. But you also reduce the recruitment cost of infantry troops by 30%. And if you have built up your relation with a lot of villages in the area, that's going to save you a lot of money. And then the final one, every skill point after 200 grants you a 0.2% attack speed increase. I don't think that's changed since the previous one. But anyway, we have a couple of new traits here to select. So you can see here, Basher. We know this one from the previous version update. Uh, well, we know the first bit, but we don't know the second bit. Infantry troops take 4% less melee damage when in shield wall formation. That's pretty good, I gotta say, for a first trait. I think that's actually kind of nice because very defensive, very, very cool for us to see that. Then, one-handed weapons you wield have their handling increased by 20%. So in other words, you're much quicker in terms of, you know, fighting in general. And troops in the formation you are leading have their one-handed combat effectiveness as if they were one tier higher. Now, I'm not entirely sure how that really works, but troops in the formation you are leading... I guess that means all of your troops if you're solo. So I'm actually going to be taking Deflect, even though Basher is, in my opinion, really fun to use because it just has that additional stun benefit. We're going to be taking Deflect just to see how it goes. We also have Strong Arms here, plus 2% swing speed, but also Governed Settlements have increased Militia Recruitment by 0.5 per day. Obviously, I do not have a Governed Settlement, so... That's not really going to help me that much, the additional uh, benefit there, but I am going to go for the swing speed anyway because increasing my damage with axes and maces is pointless because I'm not using either of those, and even if I was, then I probably would still go for the same, the same thing, basically. Now, here we go. I don't really know what to do here, either charm or athletics. I think athletics, probably, so that we can just continue leveling it up really, really fast, or trying to level it up as fast as I possibly can. Now, I don't know whether you notice, but um, <laughs> we're no longer at war against the Kuzate, because here's the thing. I'm no longer a mercenary for the Southern Empire. Now, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to be leaving them alone. I will be rejoining them potentially as a vassal in the near future. The main thing that I wanted to do was just get a workshop. Just try and get a workshop. If I can get one of those in one of the more um, advantageous um, cities, then we will be in a great position and I will be very happy to become a vassal again because here's the thing, I just do not want to be in a situation where we are going to run out of money if I have a series of bad fights. So for example, if I get I don't know, if, if I actually do get defeated, which would be kind of awful to begin with, but if I do get defeated, then it would be nice to have some way to get back on my feet, with the exception of just trying to spam tournaments, trying to do as much trading as possible. So I have tried to earn enough money for us to be able to purchase a, a wonderful workshop somewhere. I don't know where we're actually going to be buying it. I'm thinking we're probably going to buy it in... Mm, I'm thinking Maranath or Rote at this point. Um, either one of those is going to have a pretty decent smithy, in my opinion. And hopefully that's going to help us out quite a bit. Now, um, my crossbow skill has taken a bit of a hit for some reason. Now, I'm not entirely sure why that is. So we're going to have to level it back up to 75. 
Oh, the headshots. The headshots are happening right now. It's, it's kind of crazy. But yeah, we're actually doing um, considerably more damage than we were beforehand, which is actually kind of nice. Ooh, really wanted to hit that guy. Okay, do you think I can hit these guys from here? Ah, oh, almost. Almost. Almost got him. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, that, there we go. Okay, so we've got 71. We took basically one casualty. Really not a big deal. And uh, yeah, actually decent amount of money there as well. Decent amount of money. But yeah, basically what I've just been doing is trading. And, oh, hello. It's actually a, uh, a hideout here that I wouldn't mind taking care of. So we can gain a little bit of additional charm skill and some relation with the notables in the area. But bear in mind that that is really not my main priority here. My main priority is to get that workshop up and running. Because as long as I can get that, then we can start to snowball a little bit. And starting to snowball is probably going to be our, our main main deal here now i'm here's the thing usually i'd be like okay yeah you know let's uh, let's duel the guy and everything um <laughs> but someone actually said that it's easier to not fight the duel and to actually have all your guys just murder everything in the area and should we should we just try it because i, I personally felt like the dueling was actually kind of easier but me taking massive damage from one of these guys glaives before has kind of given me a bit of a bit of a sort of fright meter you know so i'm a little bit scared of this guy killing me in two hits so i'm actually going to say i don't fight duels with brigands and we're gonna just attack them and we'll see what we can do maybe i can get some additional one-handed weapon proficiency from this actually that worked out much better okay <laughs> good to know good to know we did get 50 in athletics though 50 in athletics is always always very much needed i mean athletics is always needed especially for someone like me who is running around without a horse and my charm skill is actually almost 25 now as well which is very nice indeed okay so plus two melee damage on foot or plus two range damage on foot well plus two melee damage on foot is definitely what i'm going to be taking and maybe i should have oh you know what maybe i should have taken range damage because crossbow technically is mostly used on foot oh well no no never mind never mind i think i'm mostly going to be using my melee weapons anyway so i think it's probably a, a good idea for us to do that so yeah basically i've just been doing this whole this whole circuit here so i've just been buying iron selling it in sirenea selling it in chai Kand. i've also been fighting things doing as many tournaments as i can possibly do without failing as much as possible oh monchak monchak i actually want to speak to you sir are you still here i think he might still be here there he is. Okay, I want to speak to him. And this was also a reason why I wanted to make peace as well, because I would like to go around and ask people about the um, Noretta's Folly quest, because let's face it, we're going to have to do that sometime. You know, we don't have any mods or anything like that, so we can't skip that. I don't have the developer console or anything, so the, those kinds of things are going to have to be done manually. And, um, well... That, that's just it, you know, I'm gonna have to do them manually, and it's gonna be um, a little bit irritating to do it if we are uh, a part of a faction where we're at war against someone, and then we could just can't speak to any of the lords of that faction because we are at war against them, so it kind of makes sense, in my opinion at least, to stay away from any war situations at the moment, but... Once we have done the Noretta's Folly quest, where we've talked to all of the uh, all of the lords and everything, then we will be able to do something um, about it. So we'll be able to go to um, go to uh, go to Regea actually and speak to her, and then we're going to have a great time because we'll become a vassal, or at least I hope we'll be, be able to become a vassal at that point. And there you go. So that's six thousand right there. We now have easily enough for me to make my way over to. Mm, I'm it's now here's the thing I don't know any really really good places for workshops in the southern empire which is a big problem because I don't really want to have a workshop in Maranath for example which is one of the best in my opinion because they have villages right next to um Right, right next to the town that have iron ore available here. Wait a minute. Where's the other iron ore one? Because there's one right here. And I believe there is another one nearby. Am I, am I, did I just, ah, there it is, there it is. That's the other one right there. 
So yeah, we could do that. Or I could just build a smithy somewhere and just hope that it actually provides us a good amount of iron in the near nearby villages. Ooh, yeah, not entirely sure about that, to be honest. Not entirely sure. Really wish there was a way for, for us to be able to tell without actually installing a mod or anything like that, because obviously this is unmodded, so, you know, it's a bit difficult, a bit difficult. Anyway, I'm just going to continue. Oh, look at this. I can actually hold left control now. Aha, yeah, so that's another little quality of life improvement that the developers have made in the new version where, I, well, at least I feel like that's the new version because I, I didn't know that you could do that beforehand. So I would assume it is the new version, but you know, hopefully you'll forgive me if I did not realize that before, because as far as I'm aware, I did try left control a while ago Forward! and it didn't really work out. Why do I still have a horse, by the way? Why am I still riding a horse on the world map? That doesn't really make sense considering I'm trying to level up my, my athletic skill. I'm kind of an idiot, aren't I? Yes, I probably need to take off my horse from my inventory screen and see what we can do about that. But anyway, let's see if I can do some damage. <laughs> and he says as he misses spectacularly. Yeah, very nice indeed. Nice headshot right there, though. And uh, maybe we can get another one. Ah, oh, he dodged. Did you see that? That was actually kind of impressive. Ugh. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to go in here, see if we can maybe get some athletics. Oh, never mind. Apparently my forces are just way too good. Apparently way too good. Okay, let's tell my cavalry to charge. Oh, yeah. I should have gone into first person to actually fire. Oh, well, never mind. We did achieve victory. We got a couple of prisoners right there, as well as some loot. That's all we need. And uh, I guess what I'm going to do is I will go to... I am not sure which one to go for, to be honest. Hmm. I guess, actually, you know what I should do? Is I should literally just go to... Uh, I don't even know. So a little sheep there. Sheep. So cotton is really, really good in this area. But I'm going to go for a smithy in... Uh, you know, I kind of wish that we were a part of the, uh, the Western Empire. But I don't really want to switch from the Southern at the moment. I feel like staying with Southern would be probably the most fun. Because we haven't really been with them. As you can see, look at that. Hold left control to do all. That is really, really nice. So you no longer have to do it in uh, steps of five. I think that is really, really good. Okay, you know what? We're going to go into 5k on here. I hope it doesn't get taken. <laughs> if it gets taken, this is going to be the worst investment that I have ever made. But hopefully it will not get taken that easily. All right, so I'm going to be speaking to some random here. Just so that I can get myself inside and then we'll hopefully be able to find a smithy here if there isn't already a smithy available um then it's highly unlikely that a smithy is going to be um very good yeah it seems like there isn't actually oh that's a, that's kind of that's kind of surprising i am actually kind of surprised about that so i am going to leave normand was right behind me did you see him he was like oh i'm right here i'm ready to fight anytime Yes, exactly. So let's go over to Lycaron instead then. I feel like Lycaron is maybe potentially a little bit easier for us to defend as well. Or at least for the Southern Empire to defend. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of a bit worried about it because this is a big chunk of money. And uh, hilariously enough, I just threw all caution to the wind in the... Uh, in the original Barney series because I took a caravan. My first investment with a significant amount of money was actually a caravan, if you can believe it. Which is probably not the best idea considering a caravan does require some pretty significant wages in comparison to a workshop. Only 14,000 to buy this. All right, okay, sure. Let's do it and uh, there you go, okay. Now, I'm hopeful that it will actually start to give me a good amount. All right, so we got another battle against some looters here. I did buy the smithy, as you know, as you no doubt saw. And then what we're going to do 
is I'm going to go over to Haneke. I know, I know. Haneke is uh, obviously the the place where you want to go for iron. That is probably the best place for it. And then what we're going to do is we're literally just going to go and we will try our very best in supplying some iron to my smithy in uh, Lycaron. And hopefully that's going to help us out quite a, quite a bit because, let's face it, we're going to need as much money as possible. And at the moment, my workshop is giving me about 30 every single day, which is terrible. It is, it is frankly terrible. That is really bad. However, if we can give it a little bit of a boost by buying some cheap iron somewhere, then maybe that is going to help it along a little bit. Fortunately, though, it seems as though the workshop is basically almost um, gaining 30 per day. I think it's gaining 30 gold per day in terms of its amount of production. So I'm very much hoping that we'll probably make... I'm, I'm hoping that we'll make about 200 profit every single day. As you can see, this is an absolutely awful place to buy iron. 120? Are you serious right now? 120 per one iron? That is actually kind of insane. Now, what I would like to do is try and fight some relatively large looter parties. I mean, can we can we fight these guys? Or can we... I'd, I'd like to fight the 19 and the 17 together, but that doesn't seem to be a thing. So I guess we'll just go in here normally against the 19. We'll take the, uh, the larger one, I suppose, and uh, then we'll see what we can do. I, now, oh yeah, again, again, I, I have forgotten to take off my horse. I need to unequip my horse. Let me see if I can remember that this time around, shall we? Ah, okay, yeah, so let's just place these guys nearby here. I'm going to get off my horse. Yeah, that was, a, that was a great shot. Wonderful. That was a bit better. Next shot, thank you. Okay, I'm going to go in there. Let's do this. Ah, yeah, I should probably do this much more often, by the way. I should probably head in there with my one-handed weapon much more. I feel like leveling my one-handed is going to be much easier this way than uh, using a crossbow or something like that at the moment, at the very least, because I feel like a crossbow is much more in tune with a lengthier, more drawn-out battle in comparison to something quick like defeating a band of looters. So... That's definitely... Oh, hello. Wait a minute. Are these guys going to attack them? These guys might actually attack them. I hope they don't. I would love to be able to fight them. Oh, they're not They're not actually doing that. Okay, that is fantastic. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> is it? Is it, though? Is it fantastic? Because, as you can no doubt tell, this is a pretty... Oh, I don't know whether we can do this. All right, so before I actually forget, let me literally just take off my horse. It's about time, isn't it? Yes, it is absolutely about time. So let's go in here and see what we can do. Oh, this is this is actually kind of perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to put my people on the hill here. I'm actually going to use my crossbow for this as well a little bit. I don't want to use it too much because generally what tends to happen to me especially is I focus singularly on one thing so doing one thing in the entire battle and that can very well affect the victory in the end you know it can basically mean whether we win or whether we lose because i'm concentrating too much on my crossbow or i'm concentrating too much on my throwing weapons for example in the case of the original barney series and I need to know when to kind of uh, basically give up. I need to know when to give up and start actually fighting with a proper amount of damage and uh, things like that. So that's kind of the thing that I'm talking about. So for example, right now, as soon as they get into range of my units, I should really go in here. I should do some damage. You know, I should do some damage with my with my one-handed. I should try and get some some nice kills on these guys and try and assist my, my forces as much as I, I possibly can. Bear in mind, however, <laughs> that uh, this might be problematic. No, 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 come on. Don't die now. Don't die now, Barney the Second. Okay, come on. Um, are my archers actually doing something? Yes, they, they're actually starting to assist me now. Okay, yeah, so bear in mind that obviously this is... Uh, this is due to my infantry dying pretty 
pretty badly. Okay, there we go. Let's just face to the side now. There we are. And it's basically a shooting gallery. <laughs> it's basically a shooting gallery right there. Okay, phew. We actually survived. Can you believe it? Okay, so there you go. We gained... Wow, we actually only had four, four deaths. That's very nice indeed. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Okay, so I won't be taking any prisoners because I basically have no space. I will take a couple just so that I can sell them. But uh, yeah, otherwise, wow, good amount of loot. Good amount of loot as well. Very nice indeed to see that. Okay, so yeah, as, as you can no doubt tell, I've actually been keeping a very light army. So something that is not going to consume a huge amount of my wages. And that's the main thing here. Look at this. I could sell this at Lycaron for 124 because we have a smithy there. Well, because there is a smithy there. So I'm going to buy this for 3,500. This is going to be kind of insane because I've not actually done this trade route before. I've always done, you know, this to Chai Kand and, uh, and so on. Not really done, done anything, you know, to do with um, any empire areas or anything like that. So, yeah, we're just going to sell this. So that's 1800. That's actually going to see me pretty nicely all the way over to Lycaron. Didn't didn't I, I I built it in Lycaron, right? I think I built it in Lycaron. Anyway, as you can see, my workshop is giving me 45 per day. Uh that's that's not that is not fantastic. 31 per day actually. It's gone down now. I think my income is going to be wholly dependent on what kind of caravan goods are brought into the town. That's it. So, personally, I feel like I have made a bit of a mistake by building it here. But the thing is, is that I was worried about building it somewhere else. For example, in Rote or in Maranath or in one of the better places to build a smithy, you know, si um... Uh, Epicrotia, I believe, is actually kind of good as well because there's two villages nearby with iron there. And that's the point. If I wanted it to be the most profitable but risky, then I would have built it in Epicrotia or Maranath or something like that. But let's see if we can maybe increase... Wow. Look at how much money we're going to be making from this. This is absolutely insane. Obviously, the diminishing returns are kind of crazy, but just look at this. Look at that, 7,600, literally just from that, that is absolutely crazy. Uh, there you go, okay, we gained one trade skill point, yeah, that, of course, of course, we really don't have anything in trade at the moment, so of course we're not going to get that much. Ooh, there's actually a, a pretty decent, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to use that. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to use my uh, my one warhorse because oh it's it's actually a lame it's actually a lame warhorse. Okay, okay, so we're actually gonna do that. Boom, there we go. Okay, so that's actually a pretty deadly unit now, and we've almost got ten thousand again. And bear in mind that once once we actually start getting some proper money, proper profits from our workshop now that hopefully we've given a good amount of iron to them they will be able to utilize it relatively nicely now bear in mind that obviously because we're doing it this way and the way bannerlord works with you know the consumption of goods and uh, and things like that really makes a huge difference to your wallet to um you know to take a raw good and uh, sell it for a massive massive price and uh, and then that that good can be used in your own workshop. It's actually kind of crazy. So it's really nice to see that uh, they have actually changed that around a little bit. Because I remember back in uh, back in Warband, it was kind of difficult because in um, in a place like mm, Kuro Kuro in the Vegia territory, you would have a situation where you would be having an ironworks or something and Kuro had a decent amount of iron production. And so what you do is you go to, you go to Kuro and you'd actually have to buy the iron from the town itself and then you would go into your ironworks specifically into the ironworks itself and basically be like here 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 take some take some iron from me and that's how it would work. And they wouldn't pay you. They wouldn't pay you for it. So you'd basically be like, oh, okay, uh, I just spent, you know, 800 or something 
on four pieces of iron or whatever the case may be. And then they would give you profits dependent on on that. And it was a bit of a magical process because otherwise, usually what they'd do is just come up with you know, random resources somewhere. I don't know where they would source them from, but uh, they would source them from somewhere. Anyway, um, I'm hopeful that because we have now fed our workshop with quite a lot of iron, that it should go quite well. Oh, what? What? What is this? We can actually recruit two Imperial Armed Trait. Ah, because we have a workshop here. Is that true? Oh, that's cool. That's actually a really, really cool little little bonus here. Um, but I'm not going to be doing that. I don't know why I'd want two Imperial Armed Traders. They are Tier 3 units, as far as I'm aware. So that's... i got to say, I feel like that's pretty good. You know, it's pretty good for, uh, what is it, 400, right? Yeah, it's 400 or something like that. So I, I wouldn't say that that's a bad idea, especially if you're trying to be a trader of some kind. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to see what they actually end up doing, because it seems like all of the... Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's now making 144 for us, which is actually kind of crazy. 115 now. Yeah, it might very well be a case of me literally just going back and forth, back and forth to the village and just buying as much iron as I can possibly get, coming at, coming back over here and just giving it to the marketplace at Lycaron. That seems to literally be the only thing that I can really do to maintain a steady amount of income which is certainly not how it should be if you're if you're doing this yourself i would highly recommend against doing anything that i did here because as i've said before i personally feel like the better thing to do would be to go to epicrotia i think epicrotia is probably the best town for a smithy because there are two iron producing villages extremely close by to it and as a result, the villagers and the various other units that can um, transport the iron there are going to have a really easy time. They're not going to be raided that much. They're not going to be attacked that much because, of course, the travel time is just so, so short. So if you are not really caring about where your, where your workshop is, because that's the reason why I built it in Lycaron, which is probably a bit of a mistake on my part, but whatever the case, if you do want to do that, then you should go to Epicrotia, which is all the way over here. You can see that it's actually being raided right now by the Sturgeons. So obviously that's a bit of a problem, but you can see here that Marathia, that produces iron, and as far as I'm aware, uh, Mechalovia also produces iron. So look at the look at the travel time here. It's just like nothing. It's really, really powerful. Also, Rote. Rote is actually really good as well. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Personally, because I don't see any... Oh, there's iron over there. But that is potentially an enemy village, dependent on who's currently at war with it at the moment. But, yeah, I, I know that Rote is, for some reason, kind of good with a smithy as well. But Maranath is, of course, very good as well, because it does have an iron village right next door to it. And then it has one a little bit further away over here. Yeah. So it's, it's decent. It's decent. There are quite a few different options. Lycaron for me, not the best option. But, oh, oh, we're, oh, we're actually, oh, we're actually making a little bit. Look at that. We're actually making a little bit, which is actually the whole point. The whole point of it is to just give me enough so that I don't lose 200 every single day. Because that was actually turning out to almost bankrupt me, pretty much. Like, if I run around in a mercenary contract and I'm literally trying to um, make I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make as much influence as possible to try and increase my mercenary wages it's really difficult to do that because you don't really get a huge amount of influence from raiding villages and stuff like that and usually as a mercenary that's what you're going to do you're going to try and inflict economic damage you're going to try and um, maybe kill caravans if you have a sufficient army for that I never did as a mercenary, so I couldn't really do that. I personally think that if you were able to fight caravans, then you'd probably have a much easier time of things with gaining influence, but even so, you want to be a bit careful um, attacking those, because they actually have some decent units. <laughs> they actually do have some decent units. So, yeah, it's um, it's one of those things. It's a lot of, 
you know, it's a lot of what you can do to try and prevent yourself from, from just going bankrupt pretty much as a mercenary. See, it feels to me like mercenary ship is quite difficult to do well um, unless you are having already a relatively strong army where you're going to be able to attack caravans and things like that. Because if you can attack caravans, I think that you'd probably gain a lot of money from the loot that you gain. You're going to be also gaining, um, you should gain roguery from that as well. So you'll probably gain quite a lot of experience, gain a lot of experience points and things like that. But otherwise, I think the way that we're doing things is okay. But unfortunately, uh, oh, no, we, oh, we might still be making a little bit of money here. We might still be able to cover our wages. And that's all I was really asking for, just to, just for my wages to be covered. And uh, now that we have a workshop up and running, and we have a relative, a kind of a relatively decent way of, um, you know, providing it with, I mean, look at this. I can sell, I can sell the iron ore for 200. And I can buy it for 78. And... Yeah, we've got a relatively decent supply of iron. It does take me a very long time to travel from point A to point B. And that's also a reason why I'm not entirely sure why my athletic skill is taking so long to level up. Again, it's native, you know, unmodded. So obviously it does make uh, the leveling process that much harder. But um, yeah, I, I'm hopeful that they'll be redoing all of the... Uh, all of the traits as well as time goes on because I, I i like what they're doing i actually like what they're doing with the the one-handed uh the one-handed traits and actually just before we finish this episode as you can see right here um these are all changed as well they obviously some of them don't have icons of course but they have actually changed the two-handed weapons too so as you can see increases your damage against shields with two-handed weapons by 30 percent and also two-handed weapons you wield has 10 percent better handling Increase your swing speed by 3%. Two-handed axe and two-handed mace damage by 10%. They seem to they seem to like that quite a bit, where they're they're giving um, a, a pretty solid choice of what you want to go for. So in other words, you either use maces and axes or you use swords. So there's also that, oh, this is actually very cool. Increases knockdown chance by two-handed weapons by 30%. That's very nice. Troops in the formation you're leading gain five experience for each enemy you kill. Ooh, <laughs> that's actually kind of cool. That that incentivizes the player to actually get in there, rather than you know just staying back and letting your units do all the do, do all the work. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Forty percent more damage against shields. Wow. Okay. So you already have increasing damage against shields with two-handed weapons by thirty percent, and then you also have forty percent more damage against shields. So that's a total of seventy percent increased damage against shields with two-handed weapons. You can deflect arrows with two hand what while changing block positions. Wow. Okay. Someone. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's actually kind of insane. I is that actually real? Is that actually a real thing? Because these are both the same. So I'm not entirely sure if that's if that's a real thing. But if it is, that's actually kind of hilarious and cool at the same time. But uh, yeah, who knows? Uh, increase your speed damage bonus. Your attacks ignore 50% of the enemy's armor? Whoa, that's also pretty crazy. Wow. Two-handed is looking really fun. Yeah, so yeah, they've uh, redone the two-handed and one-handed uh, traits, trait trees, and um, they're, they're both looking great. They're both looking great. I feel like the deflecting arrows thing could be very, uh, very advantageous. And here we go. There's another, uh, there's another vassal that we can actually speak to right here. So hopefully I'll be able to do that for the Naretze's quest. There we go. Fantastic. Yeah, anytime we see one of those guys, we're just going to speak to them real fast, and uh, then we're going to be in a much better situation to complete it. Because as you can see, I've spoken to 6 out of 10 now, so I only need another 4. It's, it's pretty pretty simple to do it, but obviously if you've already done it like I have, and you've done it multiple times like maybe some of you have as well, then you really don't want to have to do it again and again. So it would be nice if maybe the developers could add in something that will just skip the quests entirely and uh, just have something else go in, go for, you know, go for it then. But obviously, um, you got to bear in mind that we do have mods. You know, there are mods to do that. So not really necessary, I suppose, for the developers to spend time on it. Anyway, there you go. Another 5,500. I think we spent... Didn't we spend like... 
mm, like four. So I gained 1500 profit, which is not exactly amazing, but it's, it's good because now we are providing our uh, workshop with um, even more raw materials. And of course, we do have a nearby hardwood area as well, I believe. Yeah, that village over there is hardwood. And technically what I could do is I could buy the hardwood there or somewhere relatively cheap and I could then give it to Lycaron and that is actually a, a, a decent trade good to put in with um, with smithies because they need hardwood as well as iron. And you can see that we're, we're gaining a little bit, you know, we're gaining a little bit here and there. So as you can see, hardwood is actually 50 here. Yeah, that's way too expensive. That is very, very expensive. So maybe I'll try and find another hardwood supplier somewhere else. I think there is actually a hardwood supplier in Kuzate territory. I think Odrisa. Yep, there you go. Odrisa is actually a hardwood supplier, and that's probably going to be really, really cheap. So I'm going to go over there, but you don't have to see that because I'm going to end the episode off here. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.